Okay, school zone changes, uh, trusty boundaries, and trusty compensation, which is how much uh, myself and other trustees get paid. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and who I am. So I'm a, tru a new trustee, uh, elected October 2016. I was very happy to be elect elected in the southwest area of the city. And uh, I have a four-year term. So trustees run the same as uh, your city of Regina, um, city of Regina, uh, basically elections. And uh, sorry, we got some feedback here right now. Uh, as well as, just so mo lots of people don't know that uh, trustees actually are not a full-time job. So I do it typically on weekends and evenings, and there's some meetings during the day, but most of it is after work. And so I have a nine-to-five job. Well, it's Actually, I work a lot of overtime, so it's a lot more than 9 to 5. But I manage a provincial training team and occupational health and safety team within the, the Ministry of Highways. So I have uh, 14 employees across this province, then we take care of the Ministry of Highways and try to make it a, a, safer, a safer place to work every single day. As well as I do a ton of volunteering in our community, and I try to give back uh, where I can. So I'm part of the Elbert Park Community Board. I uh, helped with the Summer Bash, and uh, Summer Bash will be help, or coming next year in August. As well as Waskimo, I started helping them out. So uh, Waskimo will be Family Day in February as well. And family, of course. So I have two wonderful kids and a, and a spouse at home that supports me who's running some of the back-end stuff right now in this video. Um, before I do that, though, I, at work we try to talk about culture moments. I want to do a quick thing. I was at a conference recently, asked us to thank somebody we haven't thanked in a long time. And I just wanted to show you this. So I, I sent something to uh, one of my guys, one of my supervisors. And he, I sent him, I said, uh, Brent, thank you for stepping up when our team needs it and always keeping us in a positive mood. And I, uh, I was the MC for the event and I announced his response. It came about a minute later and his response said this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there we go. Can you see it? It said, I'll read it to you. It said, did I do something wrong? And is this the start of an Oreo cookie? What I wanted to highlight is uh, it's important to show appreciation for those people around you and a lot of times uh, it's, it's easy to forget how much those people do around you and, and how, uh, how take that moment and, and appreciate them. So let's move on to school bus appreciation. Uh, school bus appreciation day is this week. So what I want to encourage you is uh, and hopefully click on like if you, uh, if you haven't, um, uh, if, if you let your kids show that, uh, that they appreciate the bus driver. We had our son make a little card for our school bus driver, and it's just something small to show them that we appreciate how they pay extra attention to make sure that our loved, our loved children get to school safe every single day. So I um, just wanted to highlight that, as well as changes being considered. So this is going to be a little bit of a hot topic, and I'd be interested to see what you, uh, what you think. Put a comment below in the box, and I'd be interested to, uh, to see, and I can make a comment on it too, or I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll try to watch for the comments here if anybody has something that I can uh, talk about here. So with uh, the school zone changes, most of you know that they're looking at changing the school zone speed from 40 kilometers, which is currently in the city and been as long as I can remember, to 30 kilometers on a zone. Now 30 kilometers is pretty typical in many other cities. So uh, Alberta has a few cities that have it. Saskatoon uh, here at home is an example of a city that has 30 kilometers an hour as well as, I believe, most of BC as well. And so the idea would be is 30 kilometers an hour. And I actually had a citizen uh, send me a, um, a quick little email. And what he said was, it's like paint drying at 30 kilometers an hour. And my response back was, yes, it'll be a big change and it's going to be a big slow, uh, it'll be an adjustment. But I actually had another citizen send me a report. And I, I don't have the numbers off by hand. I, it was from an Australian uh, uh, college, I believe, or university. And they looked at if a kid, if a, if a child gets hit at 30 kilometers an hour, 40 kilometers an hour, and 50 kilometers an hour, the likelihood of them surviving that hit. And what it was is at 50 kilometers an hour, it was something around 80% uh, death rate. I, I believe it was something around there. At 40 kilometers, so just a 10 kilometer reduction, I believe it was 60% uh, uh, of the children would survive. And then if you reduce it to 30 kilometers an hour, I believe it was 80% of children would survive a hit at 30 kilometers. So the reason to slowing it down is if you get most of that traffic slowing down, even in the worst case scenario, if a child does get hit, they're very likely to survive that. And uh, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. Just 
let me know what you guys think on, on the comments here. As well as some of the other changes they're looking at and, and what happens. So this is the same at highways. So at highways we talk about uh, work zones. And when you go flying through a work zone and you see no construction workers, how likely is it that you're going to slow down the next time you, you uh, go through that same work zone? And so what happens is people get used to not seeing workers, not seeing workers, and they speed up if they're on that same route day after day after day. And that's the same problem that school zones could tep uh, that have, uh, that a lot of people have said that could happen in school zones. So if you go through there at 40 kilometers an hour at 10 o'clock at night and you don't see children, you're more likely to start increasing your speed to the normal 50 kilometers if you don't see children. And I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want to see people do that, but it's just it's human nature. And so what cities like Saskatoon have done is they've reduced those hours to be more realistic around when children are actually going to be using the playgrounds. So Saskatoon's, I, I, I go to Saskatoon all the time for meetings, and I don't quote me on this, but I believe on their signs it says at the top. Um, uh, September to June and then I believe it says from 8 a.m. to I think 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. something in there and then it also says Monday to Friday or only on school zones or something in there so basically on the days that kids are at school that is the time when you slow down and I'm so impressed to see the Saskatoon when I go through one of those school zones you don't see it is very rare to see anybody going over 30 kilometers an hour and I think that's a good change that our, our city council is looking at and I, I appreciate them looking at and considering some of those changes. And the last one is um, some updated signage. So increasing signage, even some designated no parking zones in front of the schools. So what happens is when you have cars parked in front of there and you have children coming through those cars, it's hard for oncoming traffic to see those kids. So if you clear a section in front of the schools, th there's no cars to, to hide the children as they are running back and forth across the street. So what we're going to do is... Uh, Oh, we have a question from Rebecca, or comment from Rebecca. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So <laughs> this is the first time we've been trying to pay attention to comments here. And uh, let's see. From Prince Albert. Oh, I can't see. Here's Pat. Okay, so the comment. Sorry, Rebecca, we're trying to work on this. Uh, in Prince Albert, the signs are for Monday to Friday, September to June, and 8 to 5. Oh, so it's this. I haven't. Oh, thanks for that. I haven't even noticed in uh, in Prince Albert. So. Prince Albert and Saskatoon, I guess, are a little ahead of the curve than Regina, which I, again, I think is a, a great place we need to start moving to. Okay, thanks for the comment, Rebecca. Uh, okay, last comment, or last thing I wanted to move on to was uh, trustee boundaries and trustee wages. So how much do we get paid as trustees? And so what I have on here is I wanted to show you first the boundaries. So a lot of you, I have, I keep track of uh, the comments I receive. And I believe I'm at about, uh, what is it, 130-some uh, emails or, or questions I've got from, from citizens. And that's 130 different people I, somewhere in there. And so while I appreciate that, what I want to encourage people to do is also reach out to their trustee in their subdivision. So I'm responsible for the southwest of the city. So if you look at the Board of Education, you go to rbe.sk.ca. And you go to the tab called Board of Education, you're going to see the seven trustees. Actually... Before I show you this, I want to know, uh, do you know who your trustee is? So before I show you, I want to see if you can write in the comment, do you know uh, who your trustee is, is and who, you're, who they are? And uh, if I'm your trustee, maybe click on the little heart button and, uh, and hopefully I'm, I'm supporting you well in our, our subdivision. Uh, subdivision 3 is the southwest of the city. So, Okay, I'm hoping some of you know who your uh, trustee is. Okay, so... What we have is seven trustees, and if you go onto the website, you can actually see the boundaries. So it's split into all seven. So we have uh, Jay is number seven here. Catherine, our chair, is number six. Tanya is number five. Cindy is number four. We have Jane Ekong, uh, number one. Alina Young, number two, who is our vice chair. And myself is number three, which is the, uh, the southwest of the corner. So I represent uh, Sheldon Williams as well as, uh, oh, this is an older, uh, as well as Davin and Connaught, Lakeview, Argyle, Eltham Millican, Dr. A. Perry, and this is an old map, so it's also the new Harbor Landing School, which is uh, 630 30 children in that school, which is massive. Now I wanted to move on. So on that same page, there is actually a tab that says Board Policies. So on Board Policies, if you click on Board Policies, there is, this is basically everything that a trustee and a board is responsible for. 
So we are responsible for uh, literally every one of these things and we have technically only one employee which is the director of education. So our delegation to the director is included in some of these policies. But one of the most important ones is policy number seven which is the board operations. And if you go into this, in policy number seven on tab number, on point number 12 is trustee compensation. So there are some things that aren't included in this, in this exact one, but there's some extra benefits. Uh, we get a city parking pass. So the city of Regina provides for free a city parking pass that allows uh, myself and other trustees to basically park at any, uh, at any stall completely free, uh, which, which is a pretty neat extra benefit. I actually, I ended up calling the city to find out how much it was going to cost us because I was concerned about, about how much our uh, school division was paying. But I found out elected, uh, elected people in Regina, uh, the city of Regina gives them those parking passes for free. As well as we get a computer to use for board business. So for the next four years, I have a computer that I use that, uh, that's for emails and things like that. And the chair is offered a phone for her services. So she does, she does a, lot, uh, a lot extra for our board. So if you go into this policy on here, there is, uh, oh, hi to, hi to Jamie. Jamie's on, uh, on here too. Thanks, Jamie, for joining. So remuneration. So this is how much we get paid. So like I said, most people think that this is a full-time job, but as a trustee, it's almost all nights. I do a ton of stuff on the weekends as well, but typically the, the minimum that a trustee has to do is a couple meetings a month, uh, but there's a ton, there's a lot of research and there's board meetings. So for the board meeting coming up this Tuesday, we got the package on Friday and it's expected that we're reviewing and analyzing it on this weekend. So I spent about six hours today going through the numbers and crunching stuff and coming up with a bunch of questions that I'm going to have to administration. But So what you might be interested in is the actual amount that we're paid. So throughout the year, every year for the next four years, the board chair is at $29,500. And as you can see, other trustees, oh, I'll get my image out of there. Oh, Other trustees are $25,500. Uh, a year. So this basically is our wage for, uh, how do I switch back here? I'm trying to get used to switching the video views. There we go. Um, yeah, so for the next four years, that's our wage each year. So $25,000 a year for all of our expenses. As well as uh, a neat, uh, another little thing that a lot of people don't realize is that a third of that wage is actually uh, based on expenses. So what that means is two thirds is, is delegated as a wage. But we actually get about, I think it's about $7,000 or $8,000 is tax-free. So it's for expenses that we have and, and, uh, and things like that. In addition, though, when we travel to, so there's been a couple meetings that I've been to in Saskatoon for board business. And uh, we get remuneration for, uh, basically we get a hotel paid for and uh, travel expenses like, like most employees would. Um, outside of that, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, the expectation, or not the expectation, in our board policies you have to attend x amount of meetings in a year as well as the committee uh, committees you have to attend so i've had a lot of questions I, I just put a comment on there if you're surprised if you want to know more information i know a lot of people are are surprised usually when i tell them about that information and i i've had about six questions over the summer about this as well so i thought i'd uh, I, th I thought it'd be interesting to highlight that um yeah so if you have any comments what I want to do is I, I have a bunch of topics for future videos as well. But if you have topic questions, I'd like to incorporate them into, into these talks. And I want to start including more comments and trying to uh, engage you, the viewers, as well as I'm going to try to stick to a consistent time. So I'm going to try to shoot for Sundays, 8 p.m. Please join me Sundays at 8 p.m. I'll try my best to uh, show up every single week and I'll put a notification early that Sunday and what some of those topics are going to be that we're going to talk about. So thanks a lot for tuning in and uh, talk to you next week, Sunday at 8 p.m. Take care.